back everybody. On today's episode, we're gonna be talking about the top six venomous snakes in Florida. The first snake and the most infamous snake in Florida we have here is the water moccasin. Now we can tell he's a baby because he has that bright green tail, which is something only hatchlings have a few months after they're born. This guy right now, he's got some crazy coloring, some crazy markings. He's a light tan with some dark browns. But as this water moccasin ages, he will turn almost a full jet black with some small markings on his body. This guy has a highly hemotoxic venom and if bit, is certainly not a good case. But this guy is super, super beautiful. And this could be commonly confused with the copperhead as well. One of the famous tales I hear about this snake is that water moccasins chase people. Now snakes have a very good sense of direction. So if they wanna go one way, they're gonna go that way. And if you happen to push them off their course, they're still gonna go in that direction. Most of the time they are not out to get you. They are just looking for a place to hide. Look at that beautiful baby. You can see his lime green tail. He actually uses that as a little lure to hunt prey in the wild. This guy, he's gonna be eating small fish. He's gonna be eating frogs, anything he can find out in the swamp. Now this is Florida's most aquatic venomous snake. Such a beautiful little guy. And they actually call them cottonmouths because when these guys feel threatened, they'll curl up in a bowl and they'll show their white mouth. Now when I put this guy in the water, you're actually gonna see he floats. Now all venomous snakes in Florida actually float when they're swimming on the water. Rarely, rarely ever will you see these guys dive below the surface. Beautiful snake and he's still got those hatchling colorations. But as he ages, he's gonna get a dark, dark black with some small brown markings. Such a beautiful animal. Let's move on to the next. This next snake we have right here is a copperhead. And this guy right here is actually very similar to the baby cottonmouth we just saw. But unlike the cottonmouth, this guy will not turn jet black. He will keep these colors for the rest of his life. This right here is a very, very common snake in North Florida into the Panhandle and into Georgia. But in South Florida, these guys really don't exist so much. This snake right here isn't too deadly. Now you could die from a copperhead, but chances are you'll just have a really, really bad day. This is one of the least toxic snakes out of all six venomous snakes in Florida, with the coral snake being the most toxic. You can see this guy has some salmon pinks and some dark oranges, an absolute beautiful specimen of a copperhead. Ooh. And as you can see, he isn't too friendly. This snake you're not gonna find in the water too much. You're gonna find more in drier areas, pine forests, and more dry Florida hammocks. Now over 50% of the bites in Florida are due to people handling, catching, or killing venomous snakes. So if you see a snake like this in the wild, just leave it alone. Shit. Just back up and walk the other way and nothing will happen. Shit. This next snake we have right here is a pygmy rattlesnake. This little guy is responsible for the most bites out of all Florida venomous snakes. Now this little guy is the world's smallest species of rattlesnake. They call them pygmy rattlesnakes because they are so small. Now when these guys are born, they're very, very small. When they're coiled up, they're actually about the size of a quarter. Ooh, and this is a fairly large specimen for a pygmy rattlesnake. If you look at her rattle, she has a very, very long rattle with about 15 little buttons on it. That rattle is actually made from keratin, the same thing your fingernails are made out of. Each time a rattlesnake sheds, they'll get one more button on the end of their tail. Now there's an old saying, if you're close enough to hear a pygmy rattle, you're close enough to get bit. Like I said, this is the world's smallest species of rattlesnake. Here in Florida, we have three different species of rattlesnake, the Eastern Diamondback, the Canebrake Rattlesnake, which we're gonna see next, and the Pygmy Rattlesnake. These guys are one of the more common venomous snakes in Florida, and that's why they are responsible for the most amount of bites. And this little guy, this is about as big as he's gonna get, around a foot and a half to two feet long. This little guy is mainly eating lizards and small frogs in the wild. This is another rattlesnake that isn't too aquatic. These guys, you're gonna find them more in pine forest and highland areas. Now you can see how this snake you wouldn't really be able to tell it's venomous just by looking at it because its rattle is so small, you can barely hear it. His head isn't so much of a diamond shape and his pattern is very unusual that looks like most native snakes. This is another snake with hemotoxic venom. Now there has been no recorded deaths in Florida, but it is still a very dangerous snake to get bit by. This snake's venom is gonna attack the blood cells in your body and it's going to erode the flesh on whatever location this snake has bit you on. All right guys, let's go up in size. The next rattlesnake we're gonna pull out is the cane break rattlesnake. This right here is the cane break rattlesnake. One of the largest venomous snakes in Florida, actually the second largest. This guy right here, you're more gonna find them in the northern region of Florida. And these guys, unlike the first three venomous snakes we had out, this guy actually has a neurotoxic venom as well as hemotoxic. So these guys are a very, very dangerous rattlesnake. You can see he's got four little buttons on the end of that tail. That means this guy has shed about four times. Now, a lot of people think you can count the buttons and tell by the years 
how old a rattlesnake is, that is not true. Some snakes will shed once a month, some will shed twice a month, and the rattle will break off, so that is not really a good measurement by telling how old the snake is. And these canebrake rattlesnakes are actually a color variation of the timber rattlesnake. Now the canebrakes are actually known to hibernate up to five to six months out of the year. You guys can see he's got those Z patterns going down his back as well as a solid orange stripe. Now in my opinion, these are one of the most beautiful rattlesnakes in Florida and nothing competes. And these guys right here will get fairly large. The canebrake rattlesnake is gonna get anywhere from four to five feet in length, an absolutely beautiful snake. In this species are, ooh, dog. In this, ooh, dog. In this species of rattlesnake right here, you're gonna find in Florida, Georgia, the Carolinas, and even all the way up into New York. And like I said, these guys are typically found very, very north. So when you're in South Florida, the chances of finding this snake are slim to none. Beautiful timber rattlesnake. This is the second largest rattlesnake in Florida with the Eastern Diamondback being the longest actually in the United States. And this guy has a hemotoxic as well as a neurotoxic venom. So if this guy bites you, it's gonna affect your central nervous system as well as the blood inside your body. And the venom ranges from what part the snake is found. So some snakes in Florida, their venom may be stronger or not as strong as a snake in North or South Carolina. These guys have a very, very pinkish hue once they get older with that solid orange line running right down their back. Another timber variation of these rattlesnakes are much darker while the Florida ones are very very bright just like this. This right here is the eastern diamondback rattlesnake the largest rattlesnake in North America. Now this little guy is a juvenile. He's only about three, four feet long, but he will get up to six, seven feet long with the record being an eight foot long specimen. Now you guys can see on his back half, he has that rattle. That right there is his defense mechanism. If you walk upon this snake in the wild, that's what he's gonna do. He's gonna rattle and he's gonna let you know he's there. Chances are this snake is not gonna come at you. All you have to do is back away and this snake will leave you alone. And you can clearly tell this snake is venomous. You can see very large venom glands on either side. Now you guys can see, just like the water moccasin, this Eastern Diamondback is so buoyant, he actually floats on top of the water. This guy has a very, very light beige coloration, which is the same color as these Florida palm fronds, which is the main leaf this snake will hide under. Now this snake in the wild, he's gonna eat very large rats, He's gonna eat rabbits, he's gonna eat marsh rabbits. Mainly rabbits and rats is gonna be the consistency of this animal's diet with squirrels and some other animals being an exception. You guys can see they call them the diamondback rattlesnake because he has these thick diamonds running all down the spine of his body. This guy has a hemotoxic as well as a neurotoxic venom and is very, very deadly if bitten by this animal. Now this snake right here does have the ability to kill you. It is a very, very dangerous animal. Whew. You guys can see him striking out with those fangs. This guy right here actually has hollow fangs, just like hypodermic needles. So once he bites into something, he can inject venom right into that prey. Now when this snake right here bites an animal, what that's gonna do is actually help him digest the animal from the inside out. Have a go at that guys, the Eastern Diamondback Rattlesnake. Now the next snake and the last snake we're gonna talk about in today's video is the coral snake, but we don't have one with us here today. We're gonna catch a coral snake, talk a little bit more about that. We'll see you guys in the swamp. All right, guys, we're back out here in the swamp with our last venomous snake and also our most venomous snake in Florida. This guy right here is not only just the most venomous snake in Florida, he's the most toxic snake in the United States. They put this guy's venom second right behind the black mamba. This right here is a fairly young one. This guy is only about one and a half to two years old. Typically, these guys are gonna range anywhere from two feet to four feet in length. Now, it's very hard to get bit from this snake because they have very, very small fangs, but they are deadly. The deadliest snake in North America. These guys right here typically don't bite people, but when they do, most of the time, it's actually children. You can see how a little kid would come by and just pick up this snake. It looks harmless. We also have the scarlet snake and the scarlet king snake that mimic this snake's colors. So a lot of you guys know the rhyme, red touches yellow, kill a fellow. That rhyme only applies to each Eastern coral snakes. If you ever in South America or Central America, that does not apply to those coral snakes. They can actually have the opposite colors. But if you're here in the United States, the Eastern United States, you can actually remember that rhyme. Red touches yellow, kill a fellow. Black touches red, you're not dead. As you guys can see, the red is touching the yellow and this snake could kill a fellow. Now, all five species of snakes we pulled out were in the family Viperidae. This guy is a little bit different. He's in the family Elapidae, the same family as cobras. 
This guy's venom right here is a neurotoxic venom. It is not hemotoxic. So it's gonna affect the nerves in your body. They typically live underground, under roots, in tree stumps, things like that. But these guys in the wild, they're actually mainly snake eaters. So this snake right here is mainly gonna feed on snakes and frogs his entire life. Such a beautiful animal. Now, unlike popular belief, these snakes are not rear fanged. These coral snakes actually have two front fixed fangs just like hypodermic needles that inject venom into their prey. These guys will also do a little whipping motion to confuse a predator when trying to be eaten. What they'll do is they'll whip back and forth and they'll actually confuse you on where their head is. An absolutely beautiful, beautiful snake. This right here is my favorite snake in Florida. All right, guys, that is the end of today's video. That is the top six venomous snakes of Florida. Go ahead, leave a like, leave a comment, and the most important part, subscribe to the YouTube channel. See you next time.